Praise the Lord. And the word of God says, Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. In other translations, a living soul. If I had a sermonic topic, it would be human beings. Who are we? Well, number one, we're God's creation. And just like everything that God created in Genesis, we are good. We were created by a good God with a divine nature who created people to love and to serve him. And he placed in us spirit, spirit to worship him. We needed a spirit to worship a God in spirit and in truth. You can't worship a God with flesh alone. Worshiping God is about your spirit. So number one, we're his creation and we're created in his image, number two. Number two, we're created in the image of God. Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. That's Genesis 1 and 26. God says, let us make mankind in our image. That tells you that God's not alone. We know that God is one, but God is not alone. God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He's a triune being. God is eternal. So the Bible tells us that in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. But before the beginning, there was God. And because before the beginning there was God, we know that now there is God. And so he is the God that was and is and is to come. And that God is the God who gives us life, who breathes life into us and makes us living beings that we might serve him in the newness of life. That God, that God says that we are made like him and to be reflections and images of him, image bearers of that same God. Human beings were created like God in character and personality. Yes. What is God's character? Yes. What is God's personality? Yes. That's what we ought to look like. Yes. I read somewhere that God's spirit has love, uh -huh. peace, yes. joy, yes. gentleness, yes. meekness. That's what we ought to look like. Yes. That's what human beings were created to be. We are equipped with the ability to know and to love God. We were made to be like him. To be like God is to be like Christ. Yes. And Christ is the perfect image of God, yes. the unseen God. Yes. The invisible God became visible when he sent Jesus, his very word, to be man on earth, who could die for the sins of man. We have a responsibility to choose God. We have to choose each day who we'll serve. Will we serve God or will we serve ourselves? You see, that's what happened in the garden. That's what went wrong. God is a loving God, and he's so good and so perfect and so pure that he knows that we should be able to choose him above all else. That's why God gave us options. He gave us one tree, a tree of life. He gave another tree, a tree of the knowledge of goodness and of evil. And he said to us, uh, you can have the tree of life. Yeah. Eat from that tree. Yeah. Live from that tree. Yeah. Have life put in you from that tree. Yeah. Or as a tree of knowledge and good and evil, yeah. do me. Yeah. I had problems with that. Yeah. I couldn't understand how a good God yeah. who loved us yeah. would put something like that in the garden. Yeah. Something that could distract us and take us away from him. Yeah. But don't you see, beloved, if God wouldn't have given us the option, we would just be prisoners of his love, not able to choose to love him, not able to recognize him for who he is. So we make a mistake when we eat from that tree because God, his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. Just as heaven is above the earth, so are his thoughts above ours. So are his ways above our ways. And when we eat from that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, we think we're God. We think we can judge. We think we can determine what's going on. And that's how we get lost. So what we're supposed to do is to allow ourselves to humbly let God be God. And that we take our rightful place as his people. Because being made a person in the image of God is good all in itself. We need to take pride in being people. 
people who are to be above the animals and creatures of the earth yeah. and who are to be imitators of God in the earth, yeah. to love one another, yeah. to commune with one another, yeah. to commune with God and to worship him. Yeah. Human beings, who are we? So you have to ask yourself when you get a choice, you have to ask yourself when you get a choice that you have a purpose, that you were created for a purpose. So sometimes you got to control your petty. Sometimes you got to stop being who you think you are. See, we were told we got a couple choices. So you can either be a choice of rivalry, where you have to sit down and you always trying to fight somebody. Or you can be a choice of compromise, where all you want to do is follow the rules. Or you got the choice of meaningless mechanisms. See, that's my choice that I struggle with sometimes, that things just have to be the way they're supposed to be. But there's going to be a time that things have to be placed. Why do we have to put it here? Why does it have to look like that? I just don't understand that. But then we have a God, a God who is a creator, and you forgot that you have a purposeful purpose. So in that purpose, he has divinely connected you to something. There is something divinely in you as the creator has created things inside of you. So within that creation, you need to know that you're going to have to be a little loving. Within that creation, you're going to have to know you have to show a little goodness. Within that creation, you should know right now that you need to be a changed individual, that there is something brewing inside of you. But if you didn't know you were pregnant with a possibility, somebody turn to your neighbor and tell them, I'm pregnant with a possibility, that this pregnancy that's brewing up inside of me is coming so strong. And for I do not know the plans that God has for me, but I know he's got them. I know that the plans are for me. So when you go through this life and you have an option of what you are to choose, make sure that you choose in love. You got to be loving, but first, make sure you love yourself. Don't love me if you don't know how to love yourself. Somebody needs a little self-care. Somebody's got to sit down and get you a massage. Somebody's got to sit down and take care of yourself. When's the last time you loved on you? Love yourself. Then you just got to do goodness. Can we be good? When is the last time we were good to each other? Control your petty. When is the last time you realized that you just needed to be good to somebody? I don't need a reason. I just got to be good to you. Because the creator has been good to me. So therefore, I must be good to you. So, so if God has given you the creativity, and you know you got to be loving and show goodness, then we know the creator has been creating. So there's something that's inside of you because you have a purpose. So don't miss your divine purpose worrying about your petty instances. Make sure that you don't have to worry about your meaningful, meaningless mechanisms. It doesn't matter. You don't have to ask the question why. You might even have to ask the question what. But the question needs to be asked. Why am I doing this? What is the purpose? Why, why are we living this way? What is the purpose? Why am I not loving the right way? What is the purpose? Because God has given you a divine purpose. So control your petty and have a purposeful perspective. So back in the 90s, there was a song that, that came out when I was a young adult, and, and it was fresh out of school, and it was by Silk the Shocker from the 504, and it was, It Ain't My Fault. And so if I'm controlling my petty, if I'm understanding who, that I am a human being created by God, there's some things that just ain't my fault. And, and I just need to understand what I'm to do with that. What am I to do with that? We sit in the seat of God all the time when we try to judge everybody else without realizing that we've got the same stuff on us. It's so easy to see it. It's from somebody else, but it's the same stuff on us. There's no Kanye West popping out of the corner with the MAGA hat on. There's nobody else to interrupt us. It's us being our own worst enemy trying to sit in the seat of God. But how many of us know that when we do that, we leave no room for God to be God? If we are to be, we are created by God, we are imitators of Christ, then that doesn't mean that we are Christ. That just means that we are to be Christ-like. Let me help you with that. So if we're imitators of God, 
Lord, you've done it for other people. Please do it for me. Lord, I've witnessed firsthand your miraculous healings and just in the nick of time deliverance. Lord, do it for me. You've blown everyone else's mind around me. Lord, I'm ready for mine. Lord, have your way and do it for me. I want to be just like you, Jesus. Just like you. Choosing, as Reverend Brother Malcolm said, over and over again, to act like Christ in every situation. It's not a thing that you get right all the time. It's a every single situation kind of thing. Every time someone does something and you're like, uh, okay, Jesus. And you're like, and then you come around the corner and another one comes up and you're like, all right then, Lord. And it keeps on going, on going, and on going. But you got to pause long enough to consider what would Jesus do in this situation. Because you are not you without Christ. Let me say that again. You are not you without Christ. You've got to not succumb to the fleshly desires and up to one of, that one of those who imps around us is choosing, but with each, each instance, you've got to take the path that's less traveled, the Christ trail, the road that someone who professes to be like Christ would take, not the one where it's Christian when it's convenient, where it's, I have a cross because it goes with my outfit, but what I really do is I wear that symbol because it's a symbol of a justice system that is broken, but Christ overcame the cross. Christ was just set free from the bonds. Christ didn't go to jail like Bill Cosby. Christ was redeemed of all sins. And so therefore, through Christ, we have a chance as we imitate Christ. There may be somebody today, because it's not that difficult to understand who we are. Once we understand that we're human beings created in the image of God, and that we can't use our petty to navigate through this world. But you've got to point the finger inward and stop blaming everybody else. Adam and Eve in the garden took from the tree that they were told not to do. We do that every single day. And what did they do? The first thing they did was point the finger at somebody else. But the finger needs to be pointed inward. We've got what we need to fix whatever is going on already inside of us. But when we're so busy looking outward, we miss what is already on the inside. There may be somebody here today as we're standing all over the congregation who is tired of blaming everybody else. You, you've gotten really good at it. It's, I, I can't do it right now. I can't. I won't. I would, but I could, but I can't, so I won't, but I should. But it's not about anybody else. It's your personal relationship with God. When you get called home to the Lord, no one else is going to be there with you. You can't blame anybody else at that point. There's no serpent. There's no wife that you didn't take care of, Adam. There's no Eve that tricked you. Eve. There's none of that. There's you and the Lord. That's it. And people are leaving here faster than ever. And you do not have the luxury of time to figure it out. You've got today. You've got right now. And if something were to happen right now, what would be said of you? What would be said of your life, of your journey, of your part of God's creation? Would God be proud to call you his own? If you're not sure, if you haven't done that which you could have done, in every single instance. Get this one thing right today. You have an opportunity right now, today. You may not get everything else right, but this one, you can check that off. So at least you didn't get a zero. You got some points. God, I want a closer relationship with you. God, I want to fix my heart. It's not quite where it needs to be, but I know I can't do it unless I walk with you. I know that the minute I step out on faith, things are going to be even more challenging. Yeah. Reverend Griffith shared that with us this morning. That it doesn't mean it's going to get easier. In fact, you can be rest assured that it will get harder. It will definitely get harder. But you're not in it alone. You've got a community of faith to undergird you, to shore you up. You've got checks and balances and, and all kinds of things to help you along the way. 
but you've got to make the first step. You've got to make the first step as a personal relationship with God. You've got to make the next step to say, I want to belong to a family of faith. I want to stop dating the church and make a commitment. I come here for my communion. I come here when it's, when it's convenient for me, and we go out when I can make time in my schedule. But God, I'm going to make you a priority, because you've made me a priority. And that's the least I can do, is to give my life to you. The doors of the church are open. And there may be somebody here today who's ready, who's ready, who's considered everything. And then you're just ready. Is there one this morning? Is there one this afternoon? The doors of the church are open for salvation, for church membership, and for rededication. Is there one? We'll stand here and wait. God is ready to receive you. Don't give up on God, because God won't give up on you. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. God, we thank you. We thank you, God, for this opportunity. We thank you, God, for this moment in time, for this moment in time, God. We thank you that we are fearfully and wonderfully created in your image. And with that, God, comes responsibility. We don't take it lightly, God, to call ourselves Christians. And so right now, we, we dedicate our lives to you. We know that you're not walking with us. We're walking with you. Help us, God, to understand that thing deep down on the inside, that we can't move unless you tell us where to go. And so, God, help us to discern that which you would have us to do. And, God, even if what you would have us to do is to stand still, help us, God, to know that our obedience is better than sacrifice. To know, God, that your word is truth. There's no fact checkers on your word, God, because it is. We stand firm on it. We stand firm on it, God. We love you and we magnify your holy and majestic name. You are worthy, worthy, worthy of all praise. We thank you, God, that as we journey and we walk this thing called life, that we walk with you. In your name we pray, amen. As we remain standing, has the Lord blessed us today? Anybody revived? Anybody restored? Anybody renewed? Anybody got a new outlook? Come on, let's bless God for the preacher. You can't help but be a winner with the team we have, and thank God for this ministry's coach, Reverend Tishonda McPherson, who God gave the vision to. And you know that you serving the Lord and building the church when you're looking forward to next time. I can't wait till next fifth Sunday. I'm mad because it's two months off for fifth I want to see the same thing next week. Let's praise the Lord. We had a great time. This is great. We are in the midst of an opportunity with walking with God. It's a book that cost $11 in our bookstore. And we'll be preaching and teaching all year. That's $1 a month. Less. And this is what the Lord told me. You went to a reception recently, and people were walking around with refreshments. All over, had hors d'oeuvres and drinks. Didn't see it, I didn't know where it was coming from. I had to ask somebody, where are you getting that? They said, well, go around the corner, they're serving. I went around the corner, they had it laid out. In three or four months, you're going to see people walking. They're going to be walking in blessing, going to have their book. 
And you're going to say, where's all the joy at? Because even, it's such a wonderful devotion, and we're going to have the benediction just with less than a minute. But it's such a wonderful devotion, three or four pages a week, not a day. And if you have that, you may not read it. You try and follow up and may not read it. But you get to May and you might just say, I'm going to read this week. And then here comes the preacher that Sunday on the word you read that week with a word that could change your life. But you're ready. Because the ground was open for the seed. So this is a wonderful opportunity this year. And I want to thank Reverend Morgan and Reverend Connie for coming up with the thought and the dream of walking with God all year. Amen. So uh, let's let's get let's get listen. The, the the train is rolling. Hallelujah. And we had some great engineers today with these preachers. Come on, praise the Lord. Praise God from whom all blessings. Walking with God. Let us go into this week remembering that we are created in the image of God, that we are good, that we have purpose, and that we need to get that deep down in the inside of our spirits. Now to him who is able to keep us from falling and present us before his throne with exceeding grace and love, to the all-wise God be glory majesty, dominion, and power, and let us all say together, 